Lucas is Argentino. Lucas is from Argentina. Y algo muy lindo, Papa Francisco, porque vos recién comentabas. And there's something beautiful because you just said how important it is for kids to meet uh, people who are older than them, their grandparents. And he started uh, working with his grandfather and then he spread that throughout the network. So tell him, tell him how you started with your grandfather. We started uh, to record public audiences. He really liked, uh, my grandfather really liked the family relation uh, that we could share things together and have fun. And so I'd like to say hello to him, to my grandfather. Lucas has two million followers. Two million one, because I'm going to start following you too from now on. <laughs> Okay, Lucas, so you can now ask the question to Pope Francis. Hello, Pope Francis, it is a pleasure to be here. I am truly very grateful and very happy to be here. What I wanted to talk about is that since I do have an audience because of my comedy channel, they like to follow my sense of humor, but they also like to learn through videos on the internet. And a problem that we find often is the bullying. Young people are often victims of bullying. Adolescents are in schools, uh, on the internet, everywhere. I was a victim of bullying while I was in school, so I understand those who had to go through that. And I would like to ask you, what advice could you give young people or adolescents who have been the victims of bullying? Sometimes it is difficult to go on and at times you need advice from someone else to tell you what you can do about it. I need to be very brief in my answers. Bullying is an expression of cruelty. Adolescents are not as innocent as we may think. When they want to be cruel, it is awful. And bullying someone else is an expression of cruelty. So how can you face cruelty with brotherhood by greeting them? Yesterday, I had a meeting with young people from Calabria, from primary, elementary school. Calabria, Sicily, and a school in Rome, five schools. One from Sicily, three from Calabria, and one from Rome. Those that came from Sicily saw people drowning. They saw dead bodies on the beach. And when I asked them, a person that does not have the ability to greet others, what do you think about that person? And a third grade child told me, well, that is not a man, that is not a person, they are beasts, they are animals. So you realize how bullying is the expression of violence. When you counter that with love, with tenderness, by holding uh, your friend's hand, that is already a very strong message you can convey. I could tell you more about that, but I've been told to be brief. I really don't know how this works, but that's what I've been told. Karen, from Mexico. Pleased to meet you. My name is Karen. Together with uh, my brothers, uh, we have a YouTube channel. There's five of them. We have fun. We try to show people who follow us that we can live together as a family in a healthy way with values of unity and respect. And this is what we try to convey in our videos. And we also show that positive 
positive aspect of being a family. I receive messages from kids every day, mainly those who follow us are between 13 to 17 years old, and they often say they feel lonely and that by watching our videos, they can, in a way, exit their own reality. That is uh, concerning to me, and I'd like to take the opportunity of being here with you to ask you to please give them some advice. What would you tell a young person who is lost, who is uh, not fully aware of his or her identity with all this information that flows freely. What advice could you give an adolescent so that he or she may find their identity? Identity is not an abstract word. It means to belong. So first of all, you have to find what you belong to. You belong to a family, but maybe that family is a disaster. So what is it that you feel you belong to? And you have to promote and nourish that sense of belonging. There can be no identity without belonging. And in any case, if you realize that uh, they lack an identity, you can create a virtual identity. I belong to this circle, at least virtually. And from there, you can start undertaking a path of optimism and hope in life. Because identity means to belong. And if a young person is unable to find that that identity, you can help him or her belong virtually. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. In Matt's case, he comes from the United States. So Matt, tell us, what is your question? Hi. It's all right. Uh, I, I'm Matt, Matthew Patrick, um, from the United States. Thank you so much for taking the time to meet us today. Um, my channels, the film theorists and game theorists, we educate uh, our viewers about math, science, and history by talking about video games, movies, and television. And uh, I was wondering, probably the hardest thing, or one of the hardest things I would assume, about being Pope is having to take a stance on controversial topics. It's a big part of your job. Um, and y the stance that you take, your opinion, is going to anger a lot of people, uh, both worldwide and also within your own community. And so I was wondering, do you have any advice for people who are dealing with uh, having to take a stand to fight for what's right on a regular basis in their everyday lives? And uh, just to tell us a little bit about your experience, where do you find strength? Uh, as you're looking at, you know, uh, taking a stand on those controversial topics. I am not always successful. Sometimes I fail, and I do not succeed in neutralizing the anger that an opinion or a speech I give uh, can produce, so I always say it is my fault. If I fail, it is my fault. Something failed in my system, and I think that is healthy. First of all, you need to put the blame on yourself and to analyze what you did. What is it that you did wrong? What did not work in that process? And then you need to find, I'm not going to say an excuse, but you have to hold your hand out to dialogue, to build bridges. And in these cases where there are several opini opinions, what really helps me is to listen, to hear what the positions of others are. And if my uh, position is... Uh, not in tune with that, we try to persuade. Persuade is a verb that is almost out of the dictionaries. What does it mean? It means to sit down, Argentinians would say, would say with a drink of mate, and chat and talk and say, well, this is what I think, this is my opinion, but at least the level of 
belligerence of opposing views will have gone down and you open up the dialogue and building bridges. So my experience, I'm not going to say I do it better than other people because I also fail often. And what I try to do when I fail is first of all put the blame on myself, then try to listen and hear others, the other, what he or she has to say, and then try to establish a dialogue through persuasion and never through discussion. Persuasion can be something peaceful. This this has been my experience. Of course, there can be others that are better. We have a couple here with us and their young daughter that I met last night. It's them, Jaime and Nikki. His mother, her mother-in-law, was a missionary sister. They have also tried to spread those values. So I think their first video was shot when they met. Wasn't? Is that what happened? You you asked her to marry you. Tell us how how that happened. A little bit of gossip. <laughs> Our first YouTube video uh, was a proposal video where I proposed to her uh, in Federation Square, which was the biggest square in Melbourne City, and I did it on a big screen. And The pressure was a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, she said yes. Otherwise, it would have been quite awkward because it was on a Saturday night and a lot of people were watching. Yeah. <laughs> and we made that video to share it with our friends and family and put it on YouTube and it went viral and got a lot of good feedback and people liked it and we just continued making videos for fun just to document our day-to-day -day life sort of like home videos and never thought it would take us anywhere and it was just for fun and for some reason people from all around the world uh, enjoy watching them and we communicate with them through this amazing platform that is YouTube. Um, my question for you, well, I feel as though uh, so much conflict in the world, uh, both big and small, is caused by people's egos. Um, and I feel like if we could be more humble and more empathetic to one another, that the world would be a much better place for everybody. Um, the thing that I admire about you most, Pope Francis, is your humility. So therefore my question is, I would like to know your advice on how both I and my subscribers could go about living a more humble life uh, and to not allow our emotions to be governed by our ego. I believe that the only way to begin uh, on that path, the advice that I can give you, is to establish a dialogue and a comparison with someone that I feel is humbler than I am. What I mean is opening up your heart to transcendence and before God, speak the truth. Our hearts are open to transcendence, each one in his or her own way, uh, in Islam, in uh, the Hebrew religion, in many religious confessions. But transcendence is always the same, and we need to be able to look at the greatness of this transcendence and tell yourself the truth before God. We all have uh, a misery in our hearts, but we can express that before God in our loneliness, and that will help to bring down the tone of that ego that wants to dominate, of pride, which is the worst attitude a person can take because that leads to despising others. Uh, then we feel there's uh, human beings of uh, first class, second class, third class, and those that we just simply leave aside. 
that is uh, one of the things we find in this world. But then there is a pride in friendship as well that destroys friendships. So we need to open up our hearts to transcendence. That is something that helps me. I need to tell myself if I am not on the lowest level of what it means to have a moral behavior, if I am not a thief or a murderer, it is only through the mercy of God. And the question I ask myself when I go visit those who are in prison is, why are they here and I am not? That helps me. But I am not humble. I try to do what I just explained, and that is what I try to do. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was a wonderful response. Nikki. Hi, Pope Francis. So lovely to meet you. So um, I migrated to Australia when I was very little with my family. And in Australia, migrant, migrants can often feel left out, especially children. Um, learning a new language and adapting to a new culture can be quite difficult. Um, this can sometimes leave them to feel more comfortable within their own cultural groups. And my question for you is, how can the education system make it so that these children feel more comfortable and more included and embraced within the wider community? and uh, without them feeling like they need to sacrifice their own cultural backgrounds just to fit in. Yesterday, this group of kids, I think they were 300 from those five schools I told you, one from Sicily, three from Calabria, and one from Rome. They wondered about migrants. They thought about migrants, and they expressed the problem of migration through drawings. Each one made his or her drawing. So I have 400, 300 drawings, 300-something drawings that Jose Maria saw, and I looked at one where there was a beach and the sun shining on everyone. And on the beach, there were some kids playing soccer. And one goes to get another child of a different race, a migrant who was by himself, to bring him over so that he could join the soccer team. That child understood. He truly understood. You said two words that are key words. Integrate while keeping one's own culture. Become integrated while holding on to one's own culture. Globalization is something that places everything, puts everything together. It is uh, like a sphere where uh, all the points are at the same distance from the center and you erase your own culture. Globalization uh, has to happen through a different uh, shape. When we become integrated, each person needs to be able to keep his or her own culture. The problems of migration that Europe is facing nowadays uh, through the negative experiences of migrations they've had here in Europe is because they did not establish a healthy, good policy on migration. You need to be able to integrate while allowing people to keep their own culture approach without ever sentencing, without ever judging. But that means policies that the states need to have. We do what we can, but it is the states that need to establish policies so that people may become integrated. Thank you. Dulce from Mexico. Went to live in the United States as a child, and her experience uh, was difficult as uh, that of many of her fellow countrymen. So, tell the Pope about uh, what you remember about this and your first question. My name is Dulce Candy. I arrived in the U.S. when I was six years old. My family migrated here. 
And now there are people in the United States that want to make Latinos feel as if they are less worthy, especially politicians. And I feel that there are greater divisions amongst people now, and we are afraid of this. How can we build bridges rather than walls to bring people together, regardless uh, of uh, the color of their skin? In Ciudad Juarez, I celebrated the Eucharist, 300,000 people uh, in a field. And on the other side, there was uh, the river with its uh, fences uh, and Ciudad del Paso. And there was uh, the stadium where 50,000 people were following the mass. And I shall never forget that uh, wire fence. I climbed up to a small monument where there were the shoes of people who had drowned trying to cross the Rio Bravo. A U.S. politician, a high-level politician from the U.S., a very intelligent man, when he spoke about the problem you mentioned, said these words to me. He said, I do not agree with uh, the current policies because they create resentment and they cause serious problems like children uh, being left by themselves on their own and serious problems of integration. We have forgotten that we ourselves are a country of migrants except that we all had the same color of skin. When somebody with a different skin color arrives, when they are slightly darker, then we no longer want to greet them. And that man really seemed uh, very wise to me to remember that the history of his people was the history of migrants. So let us continue, let us move forward. But uh, the problem of integration is a serious one, and not only in the United States, but throughout the world. I don't want to be too long, as I have been told not to. Thank you. Greta, from Italy, from Rome, from here, from this city. So she's on the home team. She's playing on her local ground. Um, I'm going to share a secret. Uh, your mother was waiting to see you walk by on a rainy day. And first of all, you made her feel something very special. And your father could not understand why the mother had spent so much time in the rain just waiting. And her father wanted her to be one of the chosen young people to be here. It is an honor to be here in this time of transition that I am going through in my life. I spent a few days uh, in silence uh, concerning the social networks to be able to understand what I really wanted to do and what was going on around me. And often, I hear parents or other young people tell me when I hold meetings that what I do has a strong impact on their children, and so I felt under pressure. I realized that I was under pressure, and I felt that I had to convey a positive message, which is what I have always tried to do. However, sometimes we get lost or we feel lost. We don't know what to do or what to say. So my question, which 
I would like to share with those who follow me because they identify in what I say. I have always tried to speak of reality without creating worlds that seem fabulous on the web but are not real worlds. And so I have always uh, tried to speak the truth. And I'd like to ask you, how can we avoid feeling lost in the dark? How can we remain positive when everything seems to crumble around us? especially those who follow me who perhaps are alone, what can I tell them? I ask you because, quite frankly, I don't feel I am capable to say something to them right now. So your question is how can we talk to someone when they feel everything has crumbled and they themselves are on the floor in a, a metaphorical existential? way. Is that what you're asking? I think it's better not to speak. I think the best thing would be to just hold their hand. And then you can start talking. But first, you need to carry out a gesture, an action. We have forgotten we have forgotten the language of gestures, of our actions, because we are used to uh, using only our tongues. We speak, we talk, but what about gestures, the language, what you can convey through your actions or gestures? It bothers me when people want to express their condolences to someone who has lost their husband or their father, or and they say, well, my condolences, It's this is a bad time you're going through, but uh, take it easy because things will get better. That is very ugly, I find. If you feel their pain, just touch them and keep silent. You have a re great responsibility in this. You help through your virtual system to recover the language of gestures. There is an Italian song, maybe you know it, it's by Mina, and it says parole, which means words, words, words. Sometimes they are no use. You remember that song? Nothing but words. Well, that doesn't work, can't work. A hug, an embrace, a kiss, silence, being near, being close to a person, that is all you need to do. Thank you. And Luisa, from the UK. I thought you were going to wear pink. Yeah, she had asked me whether she could wear a pink skirt, and I said, I don't think that's a problem. She would like to know what motivates young people. How can you motivate uh, young people? Good afternoon, Pope Francis. Thank you so much for having us. It's such an honor to be here. My name is Louise Pentland. I live in England, and I have two channels where I talk about style, beauty from within, confidence, and motherhood of my beautiful five-year-old daughter, Darcy. One of the things that strikes me most about my audience is how caring they are. They constantly show me and my daughter and each other love and support, and I think they're yearning to show each other more. What practical advice do you have that I could offer them for how to show more tolerance and love to each other and those around them? La agresión Aggression is always a sign of insecurity. Somebody who attacks us uh, deep down is insecure. They do so because they're insecure. And the best help you can provide is to neutralize their attack, their aggression. Just talk. Let us talk. 
But you have to succeed in bringing down the level of aggression, of anger, because it progresses geometrically. Once you begin attacking, you start by saying something in a low voice and you end up insulting your entire family because it raises, it increases gradually. And in Argentina, we have a saying that says that you need to burst the globe, the bubble of aggression. You have to burst it as soon as you can. And in with manners, by listening, by allowing the person to vent their anger, and then asking a question softly. But first of all, you need to bring down the level of aggression, because they bring more and more, and the end result is destruction. So I don't know if that was your question, but I am glad that you carry out the type of work you said, uh, following the line of beauty. It's a great thing to preach beauty and show beauty helps neutralize aggression. Thank you very much. Appreciate your wisdom. Bueno, y Ophir and Yor are from Israel. Maybe I'm wrong, but Ophir is a musician, he's an artist, and he decided to try and seek happiness by finding himself and freedom in order to be able to hear himself without being distracted by outside sounds he went on he went to the desert and that is where he found himself yes so i'm ophir this is or and together with our friend uh, rui uh, we're all coming from israel and we have a band called anna rf our music and videos has a uh, a positive message and we're playing all over the world and online as well uh, spreading this uh, positiveness and first of all it's an amazing honor and thank you so much for this beautiful invitation my question is uh, how can we become one how can the separation disappear as long as we humans and divide ourselves in religions and sects. La tendenza a di dividerci la tendenza mi parlava in italiano. La tendenza a dividirci tendency to separate to become divided is something we all carry within ourselves. You, as a Jew, may be, can remember the first pages of uh, the Bible. After creation, immediately a brother kills uh, his brother. They divide, they separate. And I was uh, uh, shocked by that. The Bible practically begins with a crime, with a war amongst brothers, amongst two brothers, because what prevails is jealousy, envy, that uh, tendency to divide ourselves. In these cases, when you realize that you are being provoked, you should never react to uh, provocations. The best thing is it is best to look stupid than to respond when you're provoked. The second principle, before provocation, you need to lower your tone. You need to understand what is the other person trying to find out from me, although he or she is hiding that in something that pro is provoking. And you should ask a question yourself. Say, is this what you're trying to ask? That way you lower the tone. And that is how you build a a bridge, that is how you establish a dialogue. And provocations tend to 
reject others, to send them away, and then I will be by myself, and then uh, sects and groups will be formed, and there will be no unity. So I will answer in the same way as I answered your question. What betrays us unconsciously is the conception that unity is the equivalent of uniformity, and it is not so. It is a relationship between differences, relations, human relations of differences. With that type of unity, you can achieve anything. There's a relation between differences, but if what we want is to make everything uniform, politically, that is how dictatorships arise. Socially, that is how the different uh, sects are brought about in terms of religion and socially the different uh, type of classes. And so I believe that is uh, the way forward, at least from my standpoint. You should always try to favor encounters. We are divided. Let us talk. Let us uh, find a meeting point. And we go back to building bridges rather uh, than walls or uh, ideological belongings. Identity is the equivalent of belonging but you belong to a social group. So if you find a young person that uh, does not uh, belong, give him a virtual sense of belonging at least, but do it quickly because otherwise he will have no identity. You have to find a sense of belonging that is greater than the small religious or political belonging that each one of us have, and it is only fair that we should. But there is something far greater, which is being all human beings, humanity, whether we are Jewish or Christian or belong to the religion of Islam, our origin is the same. Our father was Abraham. So in this belonging as a family, we should seek unity also to uh, enhance our differences without uh, ever attacking, without aggression, through bridges, through dialogue. You know. To your left, there is a professor. There's always a professor in all groups, and we have one here, too. He was born in Brazil, in that beautiful country that is Brazil, and he had difficulties. He was born in a favela, and he decided to become a teacher to make others the gift of himself, and he found a way to do so and to teach maths in a way that is different from what everybody else does. May I speak hello, Pope Francis? It is a great honor to be here with you, oh, Your Holiness, and I, my name is Rafael, I was born in uh, Rio de Janeiro in a favela in a very poor family, and my family still lives there. I moved away, but I am always in a way close to them, and I would like to talk about uh, the personal efforts that uh, persons, that people need to carry out to improve, to become better, and I am an example of that, because I was born in a favela, but I always seeked knowledge and I love sciences. That is why I decided to study math. And today I teach uh, maths in Brazil, and now uh, I will be known throughout the world because I'm here with the Pope. So. It is a great opportunity. Thank you. And there's another example I'd like to tell you about, and that is on my channel. It is a native of Brazil who lives in the Amazon forest. And in order to be able to study math, he needs to travel by boat. He needs to go to Manaus, the capital of Amazonas, to 
uh, be able to use a computer and uh, learn through videos because there's no other possibility where he lives. And uh, through internet, everybody can access knowledge. It has made knowledge more democratic. So his dream is to become an engineer. So my mine is not really a question, but an advice that you could give people who would like to make efforts, who would like to work hard, but are not willing to do something different. They believe they are unable to change their reality because they think they cannot carry out that effort. They don't think they can achieve something. And Maradona's hand of God, was it truly the hand of God? <laughs> this is water. It's far from being water. Cachaca is not water. It is sugar cane. It is alcohol. Cachaca. <laughs> It is true that when you experience a situation of poverty, of restrictions, there is something ugly that can take a hold of ourselves, and that is resignation. That is how you were born, that is how you will die. And I believe that you need to fight to find motivation. So you need to motivate. I think I answered your question in this sense. You need to persuade to build bridges, and you also need to motivate by coming closer, by bringing people closer so that they may see the positive uh, side. It is a huge effort, but that is what we need to do. Motivate. You can say, well, you're here, you could be here. Why? I'm going to be more important. No, but from here, you're going to be able to do good unto others even better, through uh, not through being selfish, but through being altruistic, integrating, giving a sense of belonging. All in all, you are speaking of problems such as uh, building bridges that are all related with integration, and I love that. All the problems you have mentioned are related to integration, the problem of integration, and that is very important. I don't know whether I have answered your question, but motivating through persuasion, through integration, through a sense of belonging, those are keywords. You should pronounce them. So who's better, Maradona or Pelé? They are on the same level. They're both as good one as good no. as the other. Ayla is, Dubai. Ayla <laughs> is from Dubai, United <laughs> Arab Emirates. Yesterday, she met with kids from different uh, countries, different nationalities, and she heard uh, kids from Dubai telling about their own experiences in their own country. But tell us, what is your question? <laughs> Hi, Pope Francis. <laughs> um, thank you for this opportunity. I'm so happy to be here. I'm Hayla. I'm 20 years old. I live in Dubai. And um, I have an Arabic lifestyle and entertainment YouTube channel. And through my YouTube channel, I hope to build an online and offline community so we can all feel like we belong to something and so that we can empower each other. Oh, okay. So my question is, because of that, um, how can we foster empathy and understanding among religions, considering everything we see in the media today? Relations between religions need to be of brotherly love because we all have the same father. When 
what divides a religion from another is stressed or underlined. We are uh, putting up a wall, and th that is when one attacks the other. When you bring them together through dialogue, by listening and by looking at the positive things that each religious culture has to propose, well, that is when we find a good relationship. One case I uh, experienced, uh, I w witnessed myself, uh, not this year, last year, in the CAR in the Central African Republic, a country that uh, suffers, that is experiencing a very cruel, ugly war because of a group of uh, fundamentalists, of extremists. They were not uh, Islamic, they were something else. And they met, and uh, the imam, the chair of uh, uh, evangelic pastors and the Catholic bishop met, and together they made a journey of peace with the authorities of the transition government, and they succeeded. That is why when I went there, I visited the cathedral, and I opened the holy doors of the cathedral. I was at the Protestant uh, Evangelical uh, fac uh, University, I was uh, at the mosque, and I prayed there. So this unity was achieved by three men of good will. And I want to indicate that there is a danger. What makes us attack, what divides us, are fundamentalists. And in all religions, there is always a group of extremists, of fundamentalists that believe they are the holders of the truth. And that can be very harmful. It is a matter of religion and within the spirit of God to believe that we are brothers. If I think that I hold the truth and everybody else is wrong, I am already creating causes for war. So it is the fact that God is our father and that we are all brothers that can bring us together, that can promote dialogue, that can help us live together as brothers. And finally, I asked why they thought that Pope Francis was a YouTuber pope. And they answered spontaneously, and they said, because he is like us. He is sincere. He is true. He is honest. So Pope Francis... Here you have these 12 young people who, for many million more young people, want to promote and spread the culture of encounter through peace and dialogue. Congratulations. I thank you, but after a class or a session such as ours, we need to do our exams. So just very briefly, what were the key words of this dialogue? Just one word each. Motivation, integration, love, togetherness, bridges, Belonging, love, communication, gestures, poverty. Oh, so you are smart. You're all very smart. Thank you. So you all get 10 out of 10. Thank you because you have given me some of your youth as a gift. Thank you.